Now, it's one of Britain's newest political parties and it's hoping to make an impact in May's elections across England, Scotland and Wales. But to do that, the Women's Equality Party needs uh, some cash. And last night it held a fundraiser in central London. We sent our Ellie along to see what it was all about. A fundraising sale organised by the Tory ladies of Bristol. This is how they used to do it in the 1970s. Party political fundraising at its most ladylike. I enjoy working for the Conservative Party, obviously. Last night's fundraiser was ladylike too. There were lots of ladies, like. So I've been given 15 minutes and I was thinking, what should I do? 15 minutes, we're going to have sex. We could not. Well, obviously it would take longer with my skills, but. Um... <laughs> It was largely a night of comedy with a serious message. If I had seen the Labour Party or the Tory Party or any other party putting their, you know, walk in the walk, I'd be delighted. Uh, am I going to steal their votes? Absolutely. Let's be radical. Let's shake things up. It's about time. And the thing is about, about equality is that you need someone to actually make sure that it's being enforced. You know, the idea of equality is everywhere, but someone needs to come along a bit like a mum and make sure that that's actually happening and that all the rules are written down and everyone's playing nicely. And there were plenty of mums in the audience, as well as a few men, and those who, for various reasons, might describe themselves as feminists. What people think about feminists is, A, they've got no sense of humour, B, they're extreme radical lesbians, uh, which is also ridiculous, because we know that there's a continuum. And I always used to say, you know, the problem is you've got your kind of extreme radical feminists there, and then you've got your kind of lipstick feminists there, who still want to wear nice clothes and look pretty. And the problem is, I'm one of those, but I look like one of those, so it's kind of confusing. And people just need to be a little bit more forgiving. I think women have to be a bit cleverer, really, about how they, how they portray it. Be quiet. See, that's a man. That's a bloody man interrupting again. That's exactly what they're like. <laughs> The Women's Equality Party launched last March and is planning to field candidates in the Scottish, Welsh and London mayoral elections. They say they have 45,000 members, which is more than UKIP. I think any revolutionary out there should have a picture of Nigel Farage on their bedroom wall with if he can do it, anyone can do it written underneath. Um, there are plenty of people, I understand, who would like to see you as Prime Minister. Would you like that job? <laughs> Do you know what? In the last election, I thought, I wonder if I'd like to be Prime Minister. I phoned up and asked if I could look around the house, and they said no. You want to check the house out first, right? You don't want to just live anywhere. I think that's a female approach, actually. I thought it was very, I want to see how big the bedrooms are, do I like the colours? <laughs> and Sophie Walker, the leader of the Women's Equality Party, joins us now. Welcome to The Daily Politics. Hello. Why a separate party on this issue as opposed to fighting within the major parties to get this issue up their agenda? Because all of the other parties uh, have uh, competing priorities um, and uh, they are simply unable to give this the attention that it needs. And we've been waiting a very, very, very long time. The, the pace of change is glacial. Um, and I think, you know, we needed to set this, we needed to set this political party up um, to be able to speak for the thousands and thousands of people who are sick of living with gender inequality every day, for whether it's the children going to school who don't see role models, who don't see uh, fully sort of fair options, or the women who are retiring in, in pension poverty. There's a real need to get on and do something about this. But if you don't win a single seat, mm. which I think many people would say is likely, doesn't that do your cause harm in the end? Well, first of all, I think it's absolutely uh, uh, very likely that we will win seats. There's a huge amount of, of, of momentum behind us. I mean, the fact that we well, where are... Where will you win them? The, well, we think we're going to be contesting candidates for the Greater London Assembly. We're going to be uh, contesting candidates uh, also in Scotland and in Wales, and we're looking at the London mayoral um, con contest. Our, our members will be voting for candidates in the next so couple you, of weeks. So with the and list think, voting system, you're hoping to get... You won't win any seats, but you would hope maybe to get some list under the PR system, some I, list candidates. I think we will win seats. I genu I, I think we will win seats. There are the, the, the growth of, and the speed of the growth of this of this party has been really phenomenal. People have 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 really had enough, and I think the model also really appeals to people because we are a non-partisan political mm. party. So we can come at this from two ways. And the first, we're saying to all the other political parties, look, we we're, we're here to help, right? We want to we want to be able to find common ground. 
um, the, the traditional parties are still operating along this very old-fashioned, very combative model in which they feel that equality is something that they have to own, they have to each own it and, yeah. and decide who gets to give it out piece by piece. And we're saying it shouldn't, it really shouldn't work that way. People are coming to join our party from the Conservative Party, from the Labour Party, from the Lib Dems, from UKIP, and they are saying to us, we, we're going to give you our vote to get this done and we're going to give you our vote to tell the other parties that this needs to be at the top of their agenda too. Well, why should that be at the top of the agenda as opposed to being on their agenda? I understand that. When there are, there are larger pay gaps in this country associated with ethnicity, religion, disability, okay. even looks, there's a beauty premiums now being established by economists. <laughs> why, why are you... Or which? Why this one gap? Why not these other gaps? Because this speaks right across all of the other stuff too. So we're speaking for uh, equality. We want to equality for women. Equality for women also means equality for men. It means an economy that flourishes. It means a society that flourishes. It means basically everything works better this way. And I think, you know, we're not saying that this, people call us a single issue party, but people don't live single issue lives. If we're going to talk about the economy, for example, mm. there are 600,000 women in this country who would like to be to go back to work if they could afford the, the, the health care, the, the child care. And the the extortionate cost of childcare means that they can't. If we were able to get just 10% of mothers who want to work into the workplace, we'd be looking at £1.5 billion in a year in, ter in terms of additional uh, tax, re tax revenues and in-work benefits dropping. Is this the right way to go? I think they've really tapped into something. I mean, I have every sympathy for wanting to give the existing parties a boot up the backside, and I think many women do. And I think there's an opportunity there because Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party doesn't look terribly female friendly, to be honest. And you would Democrats say he's been... now got a majority of women I'm in sure his shadow he would, cabinet. And he doesn't have any women in his inner circle apart from Diane Abbott. Um, and I think, you know, the Liberal Democrats have been left for sort of roadkill, so there's an opportunity there. My concern would be, you know, that, that, that there is a real problem with becoming a sort of the UKIP of the centre-left, you know, that, they, that the Women's Equality Party takes lots of votes in areas where there are lots of sort of like-minded, sympathetic women, and all it does, it doesn't win the seat, it just keeps a possibly a like-minded, sympathetic candidate but out that presumes from one of the that we're, That parties. presumes that we're a left-wing we're left party, and we are really not. We have people coming to us from all... Oh, All right your famous across, names are on there. Right, well, the, there are a lot of people behind the scenes. There are well, lots of people famous, behind the scenes. What's a famous There are lots of people behind right the scenes who don't want to be named who are supporting but us. But is there a famous right wing name that's joined? There are lots of people behind the scenes who are supporting us. But is there a famous right wing name that's joined? There are lots of people behind the scenes. <laughs> I can see you're not going to answer. You already got the hang of being a politician. <laughs> you just don't answer the I question. Also, I find this kind of stuff really weird. This, I think it's odd that people presume that they sort of tell us off for stealing votes. like. You know, the votes don't belong to the other parties. They have to earn them. And right now there are an awful lot of voters who, who are saying, you know what, you're not having my vote on this anymore. I think you're onto something. I, I really do. I think, uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with you, the UKIP model. Why can you not steal vast tranches of votes mm. on a single issue or a group of issues okay. of the establishment? <laughs> Many well, on the shock revelation that you have the backing of the sun, you can take that back to your <laughs> party leaders. I'm sure Thank they'll be you. overjoyed. Thanks for being with us. Yeah.